Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a beautiful day. I'm going to link the scripture on the screen, but it also further reminded me of um, how some of the things that Paul and Peter did uh, really intertwined into history and caused a couple of Nephilim to walk. Oftentimes you'll hear me call it the false prophet that came from the flesh or the earth with the two horns, good and evil or Catholicism and Christianity brought forth by Peter and Paul. So um, if you pay attention, uh, Peter was the first one to eat in succession, if that makes sense. And he denied who I am, if that makes sense, three times. And uh, he ignored a major commandment, I think, which was not to give the word to the Gentiles. And so um, if you pay attention, the first thing that was manifested was the Pope, Peter, right? And then so what they did was the, win the winners who rewrote history hung John the Baptist in the field like a slave for the price of a slave for everybody to cling to his garment and then create a Nephilim that walks Jesus Christ for good and evil. And if you pay attention, Catholicism and Protestantism both have basically the same roots. They forsook the law of Moses. I mean, I'm sorry, they forsook the Ten Commandments, just like a lot of other entities in history like Noah and Aaron, and then created good and evil, and which created entities to kill. So I wanted to read something real quick that I wrote. Tynus and Barnabas, um, being uncircumcised, led to the creation of Yesus. Because if you pay attention to all the Roman Caesar names and kings, it was sus at the end of it, and there was no J. So then if you correlate that, it would have been Yesus or Titus. So um, the creation of Yesus, stealing Yehohanan's first name, right? Yeho. <laughs> And creating a pagan god, um, Vespasian. There's something in history in Jewish lore that said a man named Yochanan ben, they call him Zechai, I guess, did something and went and spoke to Vespasian. And then even in written history, it was written that Vespasian spared the temple for a while, but then created himself to be a god. And then when he died, he said, I'm being lifted to the gods. And then Titus became a god. And if you pay attention to what Titus did in history, he spiritually and physically destroyed temples. He destroyed the temple that was built physically and through his teachings and laws, especially through Paul, um, he destroyed the hearts. If you pay attention to what Paul is saying in a lot of his letters, he says that he doesn't trust himself. He's confused. He used the name to um, do his own thing. Well, in doing so, he said to forsake the law of Moses, but then a lot of his language is talking about the law of Moses. He talked about how he hated braggarts, but then bragged how he was supposed to bring the kingdom in. He was killing people, but then was um, after David was told he couldn't build the temple for killing. Now Paul can. And so sometimes I liken Paul to Saul because he brought an idol in, if that makes sense. Um Stealing Yehohanan's first name and creating a pagan god, which led to Jesus Christ, was no J before English and led to the destruction of the temples, furthering murder for law, not respecting thou shalt not kill, and taking the lives of people who wouldn't call them gods. And this is written in history about Titus. So Paul actually took Titus and Barnabas, if I remember correctly, Barnabas being a Greek deity or god, and Titus being... Um, a major king that became a murderer and then when he died his brother under him i believe became a murderer or something like that um furthering murder for the law not respecting thou shalt not kill and taking the lives of people who wouldn't call them gods turning the first three commandments a third of the stars that fell the three horns on the beast that become one and makes the others bow instead of freedom which manifested into bow to jesus or hell Rejecting the name I am and killing all who use it, speak it, and claim that their gods are the light. The sin from our forefathers that led to John the Baptist and the other prophets being killed. For it is written, do not give away to the Gentiles. And then Peter did denying the word three times. Or as the Catholics to this day who house uh, houses are full of idols and sexual immorality. And Paul who taught every Gentile. He began, he came into contact with and gave Roman kings the word, making Peter Judas because he was the first to eat, creating the Pope. 
and the winners wrote John the Baptist as the hanging slave for 30 silver has been turned into a false prophet and garment used as a crutch for paganism for almost 2000 years. If you watch um, 30 AD to present church history, you will see a documentary talking about all these doctrines and all this other stuff that was created, all these images that were created for who I am. And those who wouldn't bow were killed like in the days of Nebuchadnezzar to the people who wouldn't dance to the flutes and harps. And so I just basically wanted to explain that, you know, there's a lot of different, there's like a roadmap when all religion, when all other things are taken out of the way and a person finally breaks down and understands and isn't persuaded by propaganda, they can basically see and build their own story and understand for themselves what is truly happening and then who I am can be the guide and the light. And with my actual education and knowledge, I can learn. So I just wanted to give you all a warning. I keep throwing them out there. Noah, Aaron, Peter, and Paul. Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a beautiful day. I just wanted to clarify on why I am running Peter and Paul through the fire, so to speak. Think of it like a refinery. So when there is a lot of great sayings in Peter and Paul's writings. But what I need to do is I need to remove them from the skies, so to speak, so that people aren't blinded by these words and that they aren't led to think that torment and destruction will fall on their heads like a heap of hot coal if they do not follow some law or instruction from man. As I've told you all before, um, books are to inform and to teach. They're not God's. And so whenever I hear people say the Bible is the word of God, it starts, it kind of, I am patient and I remove those desires to not get upset. But what I'm saying is deep within something is stirred up when people say the entire Bible is the word of God, because like I keep telling people, if you remove the gods and the religion and your lust for like heavens and fears of hell, what you will begin to see is. Once I removed the lusts from heavens and the fears from hell, I began to see what was truly there. It's almost like those pictures that look like a, um, a colorful image. And what's happening is if you go, if you go cross-eyed for a little bit or focus in a certain way, um, it starts to create a 3D picture. And so that's what was happening. I wasn't focusing in the right I'm going to just use this word. I wasn't focusing at the right frequency. Man, people love that word. But um, I wasn't using the right optic lens to understand spiritually what was happening. And so as I've told people before, if I go into a classroom and teach children, take the sword to the enemies, the teachers, the bad guys, you know, slay the classmates that are idolaters and bad and gays and stuff like that, and only love the classroom mates that only love the classroom people of your race and culture and make that race and culture powerful for the Lord God. You know what I'm saying? If I went and did that in the classroom, people would deem me insane and try to lock me up or keep me away from children. But then the whole world is perpetuating a book where different people are sleeping with family members and creating families out of destruction. And then like, so when I think of certain angels and demons, I just want you guys to know that a lot of the words that are in English were first like German, then Latin, then Greek, then Aramaic. The language of Giez is the oldest language that I know about so far, which is about 6,000 years old. But anyways, the point is, what I'm saying is a lot of these words mean ulterior other words. And so when you guys look at words like Edomites and Sodomites and different words like that, if you look at the words of things now like sodomy and like the God of Molech, and then there's the word molestation and stuff like that. What's happening is, first of all, they're putting the gods in our heads. Then what they're doing is they're putting certain words and writings in our heads. And so then those gods are living inside unaware. And so I just was watching videos and this one guy was like, Yahweh is Inky and Lil, or Inky and Enlil are fighting and Yahweh is this and the other, something other God is that. And given all this random stuff. And a person under him said, none of that's true. Yahweh was fighting the Egyptian gods and you're lying. And so then I read that and I was like, he's telling the truth. The person who just commented that. Because that's what has happened, been happening for 
since the beginning and people are now mixing it together like a religious beast so to speak and so i'm trying to pinpoint these different prophets in the words people like noah and samuel and aaron and peter and paul what they're doing is if you even pay attention to Paul, he sounds a lot like Socrates and Plato and different people like that. And it's like, it's almost like philosophy. And what he's doing is trying to exemplify a character of a Christ. And so I am here to run his words through the fire to protect the innocent and the children. So different prophets like Samuel and Noah don't live on saying to slay the children, the ox and the sheep and to kill and stone the gays, if that makes sense. I am here to teach unity and love and peace. And so the only way that can be exemplified is if I speak such things into life. And so as I keep telling people, the person that I found in history that was crucified was John the Baptist because Yehohanan means John and which simply means I am gracious. And that person's bones have been found and they found his child's bones and I guess his family's bones because they crucified and killed his, his friends or something or family. And the literal saying that he gave his only son for the world literally lived out because psychopaths were willing to kill a man and his child because he came to the name of I am. Our religious anger, which leads to kill over the name. Murderer since the beginning, like who I am not. And so I am just simply trying to put that out there. Beware of what people are teaching people in these different books that I read, but understand that it's okay to learn and grow and learn who I am on my own, but I don't have to seclude away from the world. So be careful. Don't be so quick to jump in these groups because they can teach to hate one another versus loving. And so, you know, I hope you all have a beautiful day. I hope everybody who's going to work has a beautiful day. And I'm hoping they all have a safe trip and everything like that. And everybody stay safe. Listen. Jesus, how big was this explosion? I'm a genius. I don't have time for this. Well, we're in hell, aren't we, Rick? You're so stupid, Morty. You're an idiot. There's no such thing as hell. I believe you, but I just want to die. You can die when I say so. I control you. I control the universe. Why am I bragging about that? I have nothing to prove. I'm surrounded by inferior people and toxins. We're not in hell, Morty. We're in the detoxifier. The machine didn't blow up. It worked normally. It removed our toxins. We're the toxins. Are you listening, you stupid little garbage person? We're what got removed! I hope you both found that detox sufficiently relaxing. Hey, man, listen. Those comments I made about your throat... <clears throat> it's all good. It's nice of you to let me off the hook. It's still unacceptable behavior, and I do regret it. Believe me, man. I've been working here a long time. I get it. Thank you.